Welcome back, everyone, to the Automotive Market Minute, in which may or may not take just over a minute. My name is Stephen Jurgella. My name is Philip Tremitowski. And I'm James Sivko. All right, guys, we're going to jump right into it. So for this last month, where exactly are dealerships at and what was performance like? Now, we heard about a very rocky month of September. We're going to go through the ins and outs and how we got there. We're going to talk about sales, inventory, uh, and incentives that are hitting the marketplace and the vibes that the factory are giving uh, to these franchise dealers. We'll talk about unemployment and some of the sneaky things going on with unemployment as we approach election season. And then we'll talk about interest rate expectations because, of course, a 50 basis point drop has everybody getting excited. But we're going to tell you, hey, pause, hit the brakes. There shouldn't be too much shakeup yet. But with that said, let's go into the month over month performance and year over year performance. So as we mentioned, a rough month of September in general. And as I've mentioned in previous months, parity from our observation, parity has gone down and we're seeing bigger highs and bigger lows across the marketplace. Some dealers during the month of September, unfortunately, went through a bit of a bloodbath. But there are also multiple dealers that had really, really fantastic months. And we're going to touch on a few of the things that they're doing to be able to find success in this tough market. I won't go through line by line here, but you can see the fact that lead volume month over month was actually down much less than actual appointment volume and then sold volume. So we're hoping that going into the month of October, that Dealers that see that their lead counts may have been down month over month, that they still have a lot of opportunity because while lead volume was only down 6%, actual sold was down over double. So it's like, hey, let's get back to our salespeople, let's get back to our processes, and let's get asses in the buildings because 6% being down in comparison to being down 15% in sales, there's a lot of room to work there. So definitely a tough month of September, what seems to be a very apprehensive month of September, but in general, still a lot of momentum from a year over year standpoint and a lot of room for improvement, a lot of room to build momentum going into the final selling season, getting into November and December. I will let the brainiacs hop in from here, unless Phil or James, you have any other feedback. No, I wanted to show retail sales from a national perspective. Now, it's definitely evident that throughout the second half of September, we did start to see retail vehicle sales start to slow. Specifically, new sales in the most recent week were up about 7% year over year, still up above 2023 levels. Yet, year to date, sales are up by about 5% uh, above last year's levels. Now, on the U side, in the most recent week of September, used retail sales were up 6% against last year. Year to date, used sales are up by 3% year over year. So that's at least how retail sales are trending year to date versus the prior year. Now, I wanted to get into the supply because this has been really interesting. New inventory was down 1% in the latest week of September with day supply now falling to 80.5 days. That's up 20 days or 32% higher than last year. New inventory came in at 2.84 million units. That was up 41% against last year. Used inventory was up 2% against the latest week of September, but it was still down by about 3% compared to 2023. So day supply right now is at about 43.9 days, which is down 11% versus the prior year. Now, one thing that we wanted to touch on was, if you look at the chart on the left, New Day Supply. In March of 2021, that is when New Day Supply fell to a bottom, really, really low levels. And this continued till about September 2021 until we really saw any marginal improvement. Now, the average consumer has their new vehicle for about two to three years, and so those vehicles should have really started to hit the used car market sometime between March 24 and September 24. But let's say that person who normally trades in their vehicle of at 24 to 36 months later, they're starting to experience high interest rates. They turn into a 48 month guy. Due to this, there's been a lack of supply of quality vehicles at reasonable prices hitting the used car market. 
There's going to be more people that have to hold on to their vehicles longer, that have less equity in the vehicle due to those higher transaction costs. And the used car market might get clogged up again. That was like watching an artist paint a beautiful mural. That was remarkable. Okay. So where I'm, where I'm at, if I understand you correctly, what you said there is, okay, well, we usually keep them for this long, but now my $800 payment, if I want to come in, I got the phone call from the dealership. I can do my trade in, trade up. Now my interest rate is going to be double, whatever it is, but my payment's going to go from 800. Now it's at 1200. Okay. So I want to stick in my normal process, but the vehicle's more expensive and also the interest rates higher. So I have both of those things that I have to digest and decide if I want to swallow. So now when there were less units on the ground, now there's more new units on the ground, but I'm much more apprehensive to let go of that unit. And then, so you, you were basically stuck in this spot where if I read correctly this morning, we look at new and used sales have decreased uh, over the last three to four weeks. New vehicles have actually increased in days supplies over the last few weeks and then used has stayed tight. So now we're in this, like, are we in a bit of a gridlock? Are we at a, a bit of a gridlock as consumers? Is that, and James, feel free as well. Is that what you're saying? I think a question that comes up here is if these high quality vehicles aren't going to be hitting the market like they normally do, should dealers be stocking up on medium and low quality bar used cars because that's what moves? Well, and they are trying to, but those continue to be very difficult to acquire. But I guess it's your suggestion. It's like, heard, you should go get even more. I know it sounds scary, Mr. Dealer, but you should go get even more. It's going to get even tighter is the point. Oh, it looks doom and gloom right now, or, or it looks tight right now. Well, it could get even worse, which would be their opportunity if they stock up on it. This is the overall Mannheim used vehicle index. And you can see that, you know, really throughout the past couple of weeks or so, we have started to see used vehicle prices actually increase. Again, kind of going back to what we're talking about, the used market is so tight. It's so competitive right now. You're seeing that in the chart that's that's being shown on the screen. However, it does look that at least maybe as of recently, the chart may be starting to roll over. So we're going to continue to follow this very closely throughout the rest of Q4. But that being said, the Fed did a larger than expected 50 basis point cut, yet auto loan rates are still little unchanged. Uh, the average new auto loan rate is at 9.54% ending September. That is down eight basis points year over year. And the average used auto loan rate came in at 13.93%, down 14 basis points year over year. So despite the Fed cutting, there's been really minimal movement in terms of rates changing and lowering in September. That being said, this is the first month since the spring of 2022 that the auto loan rates are down on a year over year basis. So fun little nugget of information there. Let's look at the average new monthly payment. This is dating back all the way to 2013. And you can see that, again, think back to where supply really started to shift and day supply fell to that low in 2021. Well, look at what the average new monthly payment has been doing since then. It went on a straight vertical increase. And then since, you know, really about the end of 2022, 2023, and now into 2024, the average new monthly payment has been hanging out near all-time highs at 735. If the new payment is that high, how do incentives look? Well, the share of new vehicle financing transactions featuring a 0% APR has declined every single month this year, except May and August. That was at a meager 3.2% share of all financing transactions, but it was down to 2.7% in September. Now, less than 3% APRs enjoyed the highest share in two years back in February. They declined March through May, and they've been up and down since each month with August reaching a four-month high and then starting to actually retreat in September. Now, real quick, if I'm not mistaken, when I read this last week during our prep call, September looks to be the lowest going back into last year, correct? When it comes down to the the less than 3% share, correct? Certainly, it looks like the uh, the lowest out of, out of the year. You can call it correlation, you can call it causation. I'm just a guy that just says what I see, right? That's all I'm saying. Carry on, Phil. 
Manufacturers are not getting aggressive yet, despite the Fed cutting rates and the long weighted boost to affordability has yet to make it to auto loan rates. With that being said, we're going to get into a couple other graphs. So James, we've had a hot print in the job market and some hot revisions. So this is basically whole milk and skim milk in terms of the unemployment rate. Uh, we typically look at the blue line, the press, everyone serves us up kind of the skim milk, but the whole milk is the underemployment rate. And um, both of them in this case are under control. If we zoom in and, and look at the last several months of data, yes, the rate's rising a little bit, but this is still a pretty good job market. The last print was unexpectedly strong in the job market. That is the rate going down, a great payrolls print and kind of the 250000 a month level, which is a very healthy uh, hiring rate. So we've been very cautious on the consumer and the job market, but this kind of backward looking data that covers the last couple of months has been pretty good. So we're keeping an eye unemployment rate, but we've got some more recent frequency data and that's the next chart. And this is um, the conference board survey of jobs that are plentiful minus jobs are hard to get. So the line is higher jobs are more plentiful. The line is lower. Jobs are hard to get. Certainly, the job market has tightened up a lot from the post-COVID employer panic of we'll hire anybody and stick them in chairs. It still is pretty good. I mean, this is a generation of data. This goes back to 1978. It's still a pretty decent job market when you ask job hunters and people that are on company payrolls, is it easy to find a job right now? The answer is it's still pretty easy to find a job, which we think is some good news. So this is moving toward now what's going on right now. And the third chart on the labor market that we'd like to look at is forward looking. So this is just a manufacturer survey. It's, are you planning to hire in the next couple of months? And this has taken a pretty deep dive. So in terms of US onshore manufacturers, which still is a decent chunk of payrolls, this is forward looking data. We've now moved into the near future. Hiring trends might turn down through the end of the year, and the employment market labor roles may not be as strong of a mover in the economy. James, the Fed has a dual mandate, maximum employment, low inflation. Seems like there's been some progress made on inflation. Seems like to the labor market still is pretty strong. What's the market looking forward to? Thanks, Phil. That's a great lead into this next graph which is it rhymes with the previous graph. And that is how many rate cuts is the market pricing in? And certainly you can see here 250 basis points of rate cuts in the next 12 months. That's the apocalypse. It's certainly taken back six rate cuts uh, between uh, now and the end of 2025. Uh, if you take a look at that, that's on parity with the 2008 financial crisis, and even some of the wild interest rate moves back in the 1980s and 1970s. So we have to ask ourselves, well, this market seems to price in all these rate cuts. What is its track record? Jobs, down a little, they adjust them, they're down worse. Down a little, they adjust them, they're down worse. Down a little, they adjust them, they were actually better. And then I think we had two reports in a row of jobs being in a reasonable position. So we get that. Then we get this report that says, well, the manufacturers are kind of like, hey, just so you know, we're probably going to hire less and less and or cut. OK, so it's like we are doing pretty OK from a job standpoint, and that's been evident. But it looks like we're waving and saying, hey, just, you know, don't expect us to keep even if, if we are growing as a manufacturer, I'm using them as an example. We are going to be slowing our hiring. So don't expect the heat check, if you will. It's like, hey, just, so you know, watch your expectations. So my question is, what do you think a car dealer should do when it comes down to them looking at their market and looking at the amount of vehicles that they are selling right now? What do you think a car dealer should do when they see the fact that, okay, well, I'm not having great months the last couple of months. Let's just say August was pretty good. July was okay. August was pretty good. September was really rough. We're going into October. What would you tell a dealer where you now saw a little bit of good jobs reports after some tough ones. You're seeing that the manufacturers and others are like, hey, we're probably going to keep on slowing it down a little bit. So as we're doing it, what would you say to a local car dealer that sees that information? Are you telling them to 
keep the pedal down and go and get what's theirs? Are you telling them to be cautiously optimistic? James, what's, what's your vibe for a local car dealer? I think a local car dealer's got two things to, to work on. One is to try to find the right inventory level, which is probably on the lower end of inventory levels over the last 10 years. And I also think that there's going to have to be some extra work done trying to find consumer fit. That is vehicles that people can afford. Whenever you're putting a vehicle on the lot, you've got to actually now do the backwards math and figure out what payments on that vehicle are and uh, get the nod from your finance guy, uh, whether or not that's working. So I think every stocking decision now has got to probably involve the finance guy for a hot minute. Love that. So consumer fit, that's amazing choice of words. We're definitely going to want to highlight that. Doubling down on consumer fit. That's fantastic. Go to the tentacle slide there, uh, James. So this is a great slide because over and over again, we're told that large institutions are making billion dollar bets and, and trying to figure out where interest rates are. So this blue line is the short term interest rate. You can see sticking off of it are a bunch of tentacles. Those tentacles are at that time where the market was expecting interest rates to go. And you can see at the end, this is uh, recent data all the way through last week. So the current curve is pricing in all of those interest rate cuts. You can see, you know, 250 basis points worth of them. That's where the current prediction is. But take a look at how accurate the market is. It really isn't. You know, forward interest rates really are not a very good predictor of current interest rates. The market is often very wrong at turning points. And really the accuracy here is like, it's almost like some guy telling you that home dogs plus at least four points coming off of, you know, at least two losses in a row are going to cover. I mean, that's basically the accuracy of this. Even the biggest institutions and the biggest betters in the market can't seem to get a very good picture of where interest rates are going to be. So we should probably not be making decisions now based on six interest rates cuts coming over the next 12 months, because chances are we're going to get something different than that. My opinion, I'm going to say it, and you could tell me if I'm nuts. I believe that if we're going past two or three rate cuts in the next 12 months, that we are going too far. And even if they were 25 basis points, I don't think if we're past 100 basis point cuts in the next 12 months, I think if we go past that, I think we're kind of nuts. Do James? Yeah. So there are a lot of insights here. One is that we can probably never go back to zero. There now is enough inflation in the system, even though the Fed seems to have won the battle, that zero is out of the picture. The so-called neutral rate, which is kind of hopefully where the bottom of all of these cycles are probably is around 3%. So the market probably has that right. They probably just have the timing wrong. If we get six interest rate cuts in a year, something really bad is going on, right? I have a friend who's like, don't ever watch a dog movie because something bad always happens to the dog. If the market is pricing in some kind of a recession here, and so we don't want these interest rate cuts because something bad will have happened. Bilski. Any other feedback there before we uh, shut it down? The long-awaited boost to affordability has yet to make it to auto loan rates. We're five weeks away from the election. I am optimistic that rates will be lower by year end, uh, and hopefully that should bolster uh, our car dealers for a solid year end uh, and at least a better start to 2025. Great comment there, Phil. So going back to playing, trying to play Nostradamus here. So number one, as I mentioned, I think the factories are going to come out going gangbusters in the month of December, trying to create an absolute December to remember. And again, I don't have that trademark. There's no infringement there whatsoever, I promise. So I think that they are going to come swinging. I think the fact that there was already a rate cut of 50 basis points will help aid them in their 0% offers, cash off, et cetera, et cetera, trying to liquidate as much inventory as possible. Another piece there is, with jobs, it does seem like there's a lot of positivity there still amidst the fact that I look that I'm a, I'm a perma bear, I guess. I got a comment a week ago that I'm a perma bear somehow, which I think is ridiculous considering how aggressive I am in most things in my life. But it seems like there's still a lot of, we know there's a lot of liquidity there. We know there's a lot of cash in the banks, et cetera. But uh, meaning in general, in money markets, I believe, Phil, you talked about last week, there's a lot of cash there. So it seems like 
there's enough stability. And I love James, what you said, the dealers need to be focusing on, what did you use the choice of word? It was it not matching, but what did you call it? Consumer fit. The consumer fit. So spending so much, yes, on, on ac acquiring customers, but most importantly, the merchandising and the vehicles that they're acquiring and putting so much more time and energy into that to be able to fit their local consumer. Is that what I'm under? Is that correct? Yes. Work it backwards with your finance guy and figure out what the monthly payments are of anything on the lot. And uh, as we close up this market minute, please don't for a moment think that our calm this month is anything but us being locked in. Okay. You got a rough month of September, October comes here and we're all in the biggest room in the world, the room for improvement. And Phil, myself and James have been locked in and figuring out what we need to do to help dealers be successful and what could be happening in November and December and beyond uh, and how we can give you information that will help you grow your store. With that said, on behalf of the great James Sivko and Phil Trebitowski, my name is Stephen Gergella, and God willing, we will see you for a wonderful November Automotive Market Minute. See you later.